Michael. Want to meet her? Who is she? Chubby. Chubby Miller. Australian. She lives in the flat underneath. Yes. Guess what? I want to meet her. Lancaster Chubby Miller. Bill is planning to fly to Australia. Really? Yes. But well, when? Soon. Do him a favor and tell him he's crazy. <laughs> Hello, you? What? Crazy. They're more than your chubby. It's a childhood name. I was Chris and Jessica, but I'd rather be chubby. Should I uh, detect a familiar accent? Very perceptive. Well, the truth is, I spent a few years down under as a jackaroo. Really? <laughs> So tell me about the flight. Hmm? The flight. Australia. Oh, you want to hear? I'd love to hear. London to Darwin. 13,000 miles alone in a light aircraft. They all say it can't be done. Which is why you want to do it. Yes. So, how long have you been planning this? Oh, since I left the Air Force 18 months ago. And uh, what about a plane? Oh, I've tested lots. The one I really want is an Avro Avian. Two-seater, biplane. It can cruise around 90 miles an hour. Have you raised the money? I'm working on it. And how much will you need? About 600 for the aircraft. Well, that's only the start. <laughs> yes. There's fuel bills, landing fees, maps, visas, oil storage, spares. Oh, well, my husband's a journalist. He uh, did a stint as aviation correspondent. I uh, ought to meet him. Well, he's in Australia. Oh. Are you married? Hmm? Married. Yes. Any kids? Two. And my wife, she manages a guest house on the south coast. I don't see them very often. Do you want to go back to the party? No. So, how much will this flight cost altogether? Uh, about 4,000 pounds. And how much have you raised so far? <laughs> Very direct, you Australians. No messing about. I just remembered that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so how much? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. <sighs> you know how life is. I left the services because I couldn't save any money to start a garage which went bust, all to help my family. And now my wife has a job and I teach flying part-time. Precarious? Very. Mind you, I'm not bad in the air. It's on the ground I seem to have the trouble. Good evening, sir. Hello, Cartwright. Madam, nice to see you again, sir. We don't have this pleasure very often. Two gin and tonics? Sir. Nice. Ex-Royal Flying Corps. We formed this club at the end of the war. Exclusive, I take it. Officers only. Oh, more exclusive than that. Flyers only. No ground wallers. I'd rather belong to this club than any in England. Look, getting back to this flight of yours, can't anyone help? Oh, my father could. He thinks it's a pipe dream. Is it? Well, not to me. Ah, uh, this plane you said is a two-seater? Listen, this is just an idea. Just a suggestion. Yes. Well, more of a random thought, really. Yes, well, go on. Could I come with you? What? I raise the money, could I come with you? No. As a passenger? No. Any special reason why not? Well, a very good one. I plan to fly solo. When you find the money? Yes. If you find the money. Well, I will. You've been planning this for 18 months, and by your own admission, you haven't got a brass razu. You've got no maps, no plane, no money. Maybe it is just a pipe dream. 
A woman on a long distance flight. It's impossible. Why? It's dangerous. Out of the question. Tell me why. That's never been tried. Exactly. Time it was. No, no, I, I appreciate your enthusiasm. But you'd rather sit in your cosy, exclusive club and make excuses. I can give. I can give you 20 reasons. None that I'll accept. Thousands of miles of ocean. There's no bloody hope if you go down. You're cramped in a cockpit for hours on end, freezing cold one minute, blazing hot the next. I don't expect it to be a picnic. Look, Bill, it's up to you. But I could help. And if you don't go soon, somebody's going to beat you to it. And it will be just a pipe dream. Thank you for the drink. Apart from anything else, you've never flown. That's not a reason. Yes, it is. You could be airsick. The whole blast of 13,000 miles. I'm sorry, Mrs. Miller. Chubby. But it's just not on. In case, Captain Lancaster, goodbye. Thank you, sir. the plane refuels with your petrol, there'll be news cameras, journalists, means worldwide publicity. Mm, I like your um, enthusiasm, Mrs. Miller, and this. What I most admire is the way you refuse to take no for an answer. Unfortunately, we don't think Captain Lancaster is uh, a very serious aviator. Well, that's hardly fair. Well, he was serious enough to join the Air Force and fight the war underage. He was one of the first to test jump a parachute. Long-distance flyers are a special breed, um, like Lindbergh. Who last year was an unknown, like Bill Lancaster. Mm, no doubt. However... You're not interested? Frankly, no. Then there's not much point in my breaking the news that the Daily Express will be running our story, and that I'll be flying with Captain Lancaster as the first ever woman passenger. And don't say it can't be done by a woman, because I intend to prove that it can. Which is why the Express is running its story. Naturally, our sponsors will get a generous pension, but if you're still not interested, I'll have to find an oil company that is. Mrs. Miller, I thought I made it quite clear. The Express is not interesting. What you said, Mr. McBean, was go and find some real sponsors and prove that it's not a cheap stunt. Well. Signed agreement with Shell for aviation fuel, with Wakefields for oil supplies, with the Trenton Company for spare parts, a commendation from the Director of Aviation, Sir Septon Branker, maps of the entire route, permits for overflying foreign territory, and an agreement with Avro to supply us with a plane at a reduced price. Good Lord. Well, we haven't called on him yet. We might shortly. In the meantime, does the Express want to run our story? Or do I give the competition a whirl? Thank you, Cartwright. Thank you, sir. You've been marvellous. I couldn't have done it without you. Bit of Australian cheek, that's all it took. Suddenly it's almost possible. It's going to happen. I'm scared we could come a cropper at the last hurdle. We won't. Really? Look. I know the next part's tricky. Just trust me. And keep your pick on. 
I'll get us there. God bless. Hello, old boy. My dear fellow. Ian. Charles. You haven't introduced us to your lovely lady. Oh, oh Mrs. Miller. Flight lieutenants, uh, Giles Fairbrother and Ian Todd. Delighted. How do you do? Look, we're having a bit of a bash here in the club on Saturday night. Oh, I'm sorry, chaps. It can't be done. Pity. Previous engagement. Yes, I'm afraid so. We're uh, driving down to Sussex to see Bill's wife. rabbit in the world was Herman. He lived in a burrow down by the river, a very special burrow. I can't complain. It had four entrances. The work's constant, but I have my own quarters. Because apart from being a brave rabbit, the Herman children love it here. Careful. So careful, in fact, that some people said he wasn't... Would Bill make any money out of this flight? If it succeeds, that'd be nice. We never had any, you know. In the service, we were always broke. They were awful snobs. Bill was never really accepted by the other officers. I didn't know that. To be a chap in that elite company, your face and family had to fit. Ours didn't. Fast asleep. So, what have you two been chatting about? This and that. The flight, mainly. It looks as if we might have a chance at long last. But we need your consent. Mine? If you disapprove, Chubby can't go. And that's the end of it. Don't keep us in suspense, Anne. You really meant what you said? That if I object? If you do, it's curtains. I'd be a fool to, wouldn't I? If there's the faintest chance of us seeing some money out of it. That's my consent for what it's worth. But I think you ought to tell you, Mrs. Miller, that in this family, I'm not the one she has to convince. Mr. Lancaster. So, you are Mrs. Miller. Won't you come in?
Ward, my dear. My dear, this is Mrs. Miller. How do you do? <clears throat> Shall I leave you to talk privately? No, there's no need to do that. Thank you, Edward. What is all this about you flying as my son's passenger? You surely can't expect us to think well of it. Well, I'd hoped you would. We'd like your approval. That is hardly possible. Why not? You are both married people. Our partnership has no personal basis. It's purely business. You imagine others will believe that? Whether they do or not, it's the truth. The announcement of the flight is already in the newspapers, and yet you haven't sufficient funds to purchase the plane. We have half. All the other expenses are promised. Well, I've spent my own savings buying maps to cover every mile of the trip. And now you come to us for money for this adventure. Well, if that's all you think it is, it means far more to your son. I know my son's ambitions. I'm interested in yours. So much of your time and energy and your savings. Why? I suppose... I suppose it seems like a chance. To do what? Oh, to be someone. Achieve something. I need that. Well, you at least should understand. Well, you're known. People have heard of Sister Red Rose and the Mission of Flowers. My religious work is to benefit others. Not for personal recognition. One must do what one must do. And if the world applauds, so much the better. Exactly. Mrs. Miller, I believe in the sanctity of marriage. Do you? Well, how can I? My marriage exists, but only in name. If I were to tell you otherwise, it would be a lie. I see. I doubt if you do. We were so young, it was like, it was like a marriage of two children. Now, he wants me back, but I can't waste my life on a childish mistake. That's honest, at least. And it also reinforces my opinion that it would be totally unsuitable and most improper for you and my son to travel together. We need your blessing and financial help. You can have neither. Mrs. Lancaster, Sister Red Rose, we've come too far to stop now. It's too important to both of us. We'll go, with or without your help. Edward. Mrs. Miller is leaving. Not before I tell you why I came here today. It's my wish, and I'm sure I can persuade Captain Lancaster, to call our aircraft the Red Rose. We were to hold a public ceremony to name it, and naturally we would ask you to perform that task. begin. Not yet, Mother. We can't. Could someone tell me where she is? I wish I knew.
Thank you. Well, where were you? Buying an evening dress. What? In case anyone invites us out. You'll have to postpone the flight. What? I still can't get insurance. It was supposed to be all arranged. The underwriters changed their mind and no other company will cover you. Look, if we delay now, we'll be a joke. I have no choice. The press will roast us, the sponsors will back out. Mrs. Miller, if you fly without insurance, it's my money at risk. Mr. Lancaster, it's our lives. I discussed this with my son. And I'll tell you his answer. We go. We take the chance because it'll never come again. To hell with insurance. Mrs. Miller, please. Thank you. If we're finally ready, the cameras are already set up. I do suggest we begin, Billy. Billy, I entrust in your hands these pamphlets, which contain my religious verse, to distribute them among the far-flung heathen places through which you will travel. His hand forever there to hold. His spirit guides this venture bold. Time to go. Oh, goodbye, Father. It's madness to fly without cover. Madness. We have to go now. Oh, very nice. Very tasty. Very true. Hold it like that, Mrs. Miller. Smile, Mrs. Miller. Lovely bit of crackling. And one for the newsroom, Mrs. Miller. It's my turn, boys. <laughs> Remember, darling boy, this is your flight. Your dream is about to be realized. And take good care of my pamphlets. Yes, Mother. Take care. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye, old girl. Chin up. Mm. Good luck. Thank you. We'll set in contact.
My dear. I expect any moment now, they should be landing in Paris. Paris 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 I'm trying to tell him that the fog and the headwinds blew us off course, which is why we're in his field. Don't ask me, I never went Ah, l'aéroport <laughs> L'aéroport. Où est l'aéroport Tu sais où est l'aéroport hein? uh, Combien de kilomètres hein? Oh, 3 kilomètres 3 kilomètres Non, 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 non 3 kilomètres. 5 kilomètres. Tu déconnes, 3 kilomètres. Non, je connais mieux la région que toi. 3 kilomètres, c'est par là. Non, c'est par là. C'est par là, je te dis, c'est par là. Non, c'est par là. Can we take off Oh, I think so. But we'll have to lighten the load, and I don't just mean mother's pamphlets. Every scrap of surplus weight has to go. Madame, l'aéroport. Voilà. Merci. And, uh, thanks a heap for carrying the cases. Hein? T'as vu? Regarde ton cul by Captain William Lancaster and carrying Mrs. Keith Miller, the first woman passenger to make a long-distance flight, has successfully reached Rome. Dispatches received from Mrs. Miller emphasize the intense hardship of the flight across Europe, alternately battling strong headwinds and severe cold. However, she and Captain Lancaster are reported in good spirits and on schedule for their record-breaking attempt.
Here we are. Egypt. According to the press and the BBC, they arrived here on the 29th, refuelled, and while Bill serviced the engine, Mrs. Miller was entertained at the Cairo Press Club. Mrs. Miller sends dispatches under her contract with the Daily Express. I sometimes think she imagines it's her flight. I read between her lines and that's the feeling I get. I think that's slightly unfair. Do you? After all, she got things moving. Bill's years of talk. Do you think he'd be there now without her push? Years of talk? You know what I mean. I gather you don't have a very high opinion of Billy. I'm merely saying without her there'd be no flight. Shall I switch off the machine? Is anyone at all interested in the slides? Yes, of course we are. What are we looking at here? The Syrian desert. Looks awful. He'll fly over it towards Basra. And then perhaps tomorrow sometime he'll arrive here. The Persian Gulf. He's making splendid progress, Anne. You should be proud of him. I am. Yeah, as I'm sure we all are. <clears throat> Uh, the press is starting to take him seriously at last. This morning, the Times referred to it as an epic flight. A great adventure. His mother and I always knew he'd make his mark someday. آب مال کیه؟ خلابانه بگیریم بیاره اینجا ببینم بیا شما عجمی ها بیاییم پایین با تو هم تو هم هم اینطور زود باش تحت توقیفیم بیا بیرون Welcome, Mrs. Sir, Bosch. Shall I talk to him? Get on my man. Come here. Steady, almost put it out in a minute. Somebody must speak English. Bloody well, hope so. Or a two. You didn't learn Persian at school either, did you? Well, not here. Chavin, the Russian Bayadi. Maybe two shit. The van is all right. Well, cut that out. That's a mince of smalls. Shut up. It's not funny. I know it's not funny. I'm quite aware it's not the slightest bit funny. Now, what's Genghis Khan doing? Sending for the firing squad. Guru Bang Gandali. Where are you? Bale, bale, bale. پس ما اینجا شب نگرشون میداریم تا اطلاع سانوی بسیار خوب خدا حافظ اینا چیه؟ اینا چیه؟ از کجا بردین؟ اگر آسکنی باید این 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 On the other hand, if you wish to tear them up, I shan't tell Mother. Right.
I'm not quite sure why. We're obviously under arrest. Have a cigarette. I don't want a cigarette. Easy, old girl. Look, I don't want you being so damned English and stiff upper lipped. I'm scared. So am I. I'm not going to give them the pleasure of knowing it. این غذا بخورید اونم رقت خواب بگیریم بخوابیم من ا فیو وردز آی تینک دیز ار دی هیدن ترایبز ات مادر واز تاکینگ ابوت اوه ول لیست از فود ام هنگری انف تو بی دی هورس پرابلی ویل Smashing place, Persia. It's a wonderful place. First class food. Great beds. <laughs> Definitely worth a special deed. I'm frightfully sorry about all this. Damn poor show. Trust you didn't have too dreadful a night. Not too dreadful. We did finally manage some rest. Towards morning. Well, HM's government will make a complaint. They're very touchy down here on the Persian Gulf. Thought you might have been spies. Well, please tell the officer we don't hold a grudge. That's very decent of you, Mrs. Miller. Ma hine nadorim, ma dostim. خواهش میکنم خواهش میکنم به مادمازل و موسیو بفرمایید که اگر امکان داره یک روز دیگه در خدمت ما باشن تا ما بتونیم از خجالتشون در بیاییم تلافی دیشب رو در بیاییم خواهش میکنم He wishes you to stay for another night to be his guest in the officer's mess I'll tell him that as much as we'd like that we have to do some work on the plane strip the engine, clear the fuel blockages and fill the tanks and be on our way yes, But it is a kind offer and We will remember this place. Tell him that. Well, I must say, you're being frightfully sporting about it. I 
saw that. Engine's fixed. All set. I love you. And I'm crazy about you. I want to shout it out aloud. Tell the whole world. We can't, though, can we? I suppose not. Any hint? A breath of scandal. Goodbye, sponsors. <laughs> A bunch of wowsers. <laughs> Goodbye everywhere we go. We'd be ostracized. For falling in love. For being married. They'd crucify us. Well, I, I can't promise not to feel happy. I refuse to be a hypocrite. As your husband. And my wife. They don't deserve to hear it from other people. Well, I'm not very good at let's pretend, Bill. But I'll try. is not as bad as the BBC predicts for the next leg of their journey to Singapore. The danger was with him all the way and we were too trusty to see it. He's fallen in love with that woman. and reached Singapore. This breaks all previous long-distance flight records for an aeroplane of this size. Mrs. Miller and her pilot, Captain Lancaster, have surprised the aviation world by their quite remarkable achievement. I expect it's quite exciting being a naughty, handsome man, flying with a woman. Mrs. Miller and I have a strictly business relationship. In the air, perhaps, darling. On the ground. I wouldn't trust you an inch. Uh, no speeches. Um, I just want us to raise our glasses to two fine people. They uh, started out with nothing except guts and determination. Nobody in England thought much of their chances. Well, here they are. And tomorrow they start on the last lap. When they touch down in Darwin, they're going to be world famous. I give you Mrs. Miller and Captain Lancaster, Chubby and Bill. Chubby, Chubby, and, Bill. Chubby and Bill. Thank God she isn't here. Who? So yeah, perfectly well, who? Oh, surely you can't mean that lovely Marion Bellamy star of the Singapore social scene. She's all over you like a, like a blowfly on a lamb chop. What's wrong? I love you. Right now? All the time. Every minute. I've never been this happy. Nor have I. Just the hidden will come to wave us goodbye. I want desperately to kiss you. Likewise. Better not. No. I suppose they're wondering what all this is about. Well, last minute instructions. Pilot to co-pilot. Plotting our course. You better get on with it, otherwise I'll wrap my arms around you. Even possibly my legs. Wonderful. Can you imagine? Great big headlines. Uproar. Go and start the plane. 
God bless. You too. Set in contact. Set in contact. You stop it. Stop what? Blaming yourself. It was my fault. It was an accident. I forgot to turn on the fuel switch. That is not an accident. It's a stupid schoolboy error. One mistake in nearly 10,000 miles. It only takes one. You're determined, aren't you? 100% certain we're finished. Chubby, we've no insurance and hardly any money. So? So, do me a... Stop trying to make me feel better. Well, lads, not a pretty sight. This should set air travel back a bit, eh? Hmm? Well, you need engine spares, new cowling, wing struts and bolts, instrument recalibration, complete rewiring, new fuel tank, new propeller. In other words, a total write-off. Almost. At least a total rebuild. <laughs> Who the hell could rebuild it? I could. That's right, he could. You just get the part sent out, and I'll put her together again. I'm afraid they don't send spares on credit. We haven't got any money. So, raise it. How? Well, I don't know. Beg, borrow, steal, pass the hat round. Oh, you've come too far to give up now. You're fixed up with a room at the police barracks, and Chubby's welcome here for as long as it takes. I don't know how to thank you, any of you. There's no need. And perhaps Mr. Kawasaji has some cheerful news. Who? He rang up. Mr. Ranjit Kawasaji. <laughs> Communications manager, Singapore Telegraph Office. <laughs> he wants to see you. Many, many cables, sir. Many, many messages of congratulation and good luck. For us? Indeed, Captain Lancaster, sir. And Mrs. Miller, for you too. Cables sent to welcome your arrival at Batavia. Batavia? In the Dutch East Indies, you know. We know where it is. We didn't get there, that's all. This is true, sir. Most unfortunately true. In anticipation, you see, these cables were sent to you. But now Batavia have sent them on to us. And therefore, we must charge you excess cost. Excess? The cost of telegraphic transmission from Batavia to Singapore Central. Calculated for your inspection. what time it is, I'd call my watch and count cutter. Why, it's Captain Lancaster. Mrs. Bellamy. And Mrs. Um, Miller. Oh, of course. 
so sorry to hear about your mishap. I expect you'll be going home to England, will you? Giving up? Such a shame. After all your hopes, do excuse me. Chubby? Yes, Bill? Do you know how much money we have? Not very much, Bill. We have two pounds sterling and four dollars Singapore, and you know what? We're going to spend every bloody penny. Mmm, I like the new dress. Thank you. I tried to tell Bill we couldn't afford it. I've been trying to explain to her the way it makes her look we can't not afford it. You know what I mean? Yes, I think I do. The last time we ate here, it was omelette Lancaster and uh, roast partridge milk. Mm, don't remind me. Should have been winging your way around Australia by now. First lady of the air. Damn tragedy. Yeah, I doubt that it's new, Sam, but we're stony, motherless broke. It's not news. Mm, well, people are being kind and the charity's killing me. You want to borrow some money? The answer's no. Well, it's uh, short and sweet and honest. I never lend, except at uh, exorbitant rates of interest you couldn't afford. But before I ruin your meal, shove that in your handbag. Sam. It's not a loan. I want to see you finish the flight. And I won't have you traipsing around Singapore with a begging bowl. And don't cry. Or I'll cancel the check. about a chappy called Hinkler. Bert Hinkler. According to the paper, this Hinkler claims he's all set to do a solo flight. But do you know him, Bill? I've met him. He's a good flyer. Be a rotten shame if he beat you at this stage. Yes. How are the repairs coming? Hmm? How are the repairs coming? Slowly. Ronnie, why don't we freshen the drinks? Oh, Lee can do that. Why don't we do it? What? Oh, yes, righto. Uh, why don't we? Uh, same again, all right? Please. Size of the town and all I want to do is make love to you. It's hell for me to. You marry me. What? Will you marry me. I've written to Anne for a divorce. When it's through and yours is through. Will you? Mm.
Good hand glove. Fred, sir. Now. It seems he'll beat you to Australia after all. You must be disappointed. Naturally. As they say in the racing world, no point in coming second. How true. Marion, surely you're needed on the croquet lawn. Oh, not yet. Such a charming man. We did enjoy having him to lunch. It's a pity you weren't there. I don't recall being invited. Oh, I'm sure that was an oversight. If you ask me, it's a rotten shame. What is, dear? Hinkler, the whole business. He's even flying an Avro Avian, the very same aircraft. In my opinion, he's an opportunist, and a lot of people agree with me. <laughs> All's fair in love and flying. Would you say so, Mrs Miller? Yes. I expect there'll be lots of people to welcome him in Darwin. No doubt, he'll make a fortune. Marion, it's your turn to play now. Still, you had your chance, didn't you? Someday I may kill that woman. She's right, you know. We did have our chance. It's his turn now. Well, that's not what most of us think. We don't like the way he's stealing your thunder after what you and Bill have been through. In fact, don't be surprised if he doesn't leave here quite as soon as he expects. Sabotage? Who the hell said anything about sabotage? Sam, look, you've been a good friend, but please, please, tell them all, lay off. Bill, the bloke's gonna pinch all the glory. You want that? Of course I don't want it. If some natural mishap delayed him, of course I'd be delighted. But I can't allow a bunch of people to smash up his plane just because they think we've had a raw deal. If a bunch of people was to try it, old mate, who would stop them? I would. I mean that. been some wild talk. I see you've heard it. Well, don't worry, I'll sleep in the cockpit. No. You go home and get a decent night's rest. I'll guard the plane. Go on. You need all your wits about you for that team war crossing. Bill, when you crashed, everybody in England said you were out of it. If I'd known, I'd... I'm just so damn sorry it turned out this way. So am I. But you won't prank me for Darwin just to make me feel better, will you? No. I thought not. I'll see you in Australia. Be two weeks behind you. I read it. They wouldn't have wrecked his plane, just delayed him. I know, but it's Bill all over. So bloody British. It's called playing the game. Mm. Doing the right thing. All that rot. Very Bill Lancaster. What's going to happen to you two when this is over? I'm going to marry him. Have his children. 
You and all that domesticity. I hope so, Alice. I really do. everybody. No band, no papers. No cheering crowds, just us. Good day. Where'd you come from? England. I Via Singapore and Batavia. Straight. In this ride? Yes. Got it. You must be... Lancaster and uh, Mrs. Miller. Yeah, that's it. That's it, you must be. You weren't meant to come today. Why not? Who, where? There's rain right across the Timor Sea. Yes, we know. We flew through it. Must be off your rockers. If you like, I'm sorry, sir. Do, do you think you could log our arrival so that we could change into some dry clothes? And perhaps brew up a pot of tea or something with frozen. Hang on. Back to your aeroplane. I beg your pardon? Outside at once. Oh, sorry, mate. It's regulations. Longest flight ever made by a woman. Congratulations, Mrs. Miller. Thank you. A dangerous journey? At times, yes. Were you ever afraid? Well, I'd be a liar if I said no, but uh, I had complete trust in Captain Lancaster. Uh, you also flew the Red Rose yourself? Yes, Captain Lancaster taught me to fly. Uh, quite. And was she a good pupil, Captain? Oh, very good. A natural pilot. I'm sure all Australia will be delighted to hear that. <laughs> 